welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and this is my buddy Johnny Millennium. Thank you for being here, my friend. No problem. You get Thanks a, for having me. You have a very formal handshake. Yeah, this is not a beer here. This is a nice water. <laughs> We're not drinking beer before we begin. That's straight vodka. <laughs> straight and, vodka. And we are going to be talking about all kinds of incredible things today. But you know, we've got to get started with the news, and Johnny and I are going to talk about some of the stuff that's happening in our rundown today. But first, I want to uh, give a shout out to Sean Peterson. He is our newest sponsor, and we thank you so much for your support. Remember, if you'd like to sponsor uh, EPN, you got to go to gaming.youtube.com slash EPN TV and click that sponsor button. And thank you all that do or and uh, support us in any way that you do, whether you're watching, whether you're here live or you're watching the archive, you rock. Thank you so much. But let's get started with the rundown. The Battle Royale component in Fortnite is getting a lot bigger. Epic Games has announced that they're adding a new mode to the Battle Royale portion of the game that will increase the team size to 20. This means that players will be able to join together in groups of 20 and then face off against five other teams of 20, keeping the total number of players on the map at 100. Epic thinks this will change the way people play, allowing them to organize in larger groups and coordinate their efforts, if you all have headsets, that is. The Teams of 20 mode launches tomorrow, but will only be available for a limited time. And we'll talk about the uh, success of Fortnite uh, after the rundown bits right sure, now. Sure, yeah. Right I, haven't, I haven't played the game. I've seen a lot of people play. It looks amazing. It, it looks pretty cool. It does look Have amazing. Have you played a lot of it? I, I've just played it in uh, test settings, but I haven't played the the sort of finished version that's available. Oh, right, like right. Nowhere. I've downloaded it, but I just haven't set up all my accounts. I definitely plan to. Another big shooter is getting some new and very unexpected content. Activision and developer Treyarch have released a new mode and map for 2015's Call of Duty Black Ops 3. The map is called Redwood Snow and is a new snow-covered version of the existing map Redwood. The new mode is called Infected and sees one player turn into a zombie, of course, at the start of the match with the goal of inter-infecting the other players before the time is up. The fact that Activision is releasing new content for such an old game speaks to the lasting popularity of Black Ops 3 and lends credibility to the rumors that the next game in the series will be Black Ops 4. Expect that to be announced very soon. And that is free. Uh, yes, it's... Well, as you know, it's funny these days. I'm shocked when something's free. I'm like, <laughs> you didn't have to pay for that? That's yeah, great. I think free is going to be an operative word wow. a lot this year. Yeah. Uh, yet another big media franchise is about to sink its teeth into the augmented reality market. Universal Pictures has announced Jurassic World Alive, an augmented reality game that's pretty much Pokemon Go with dinosaurs. Users will be able to search the world around them to find pocket monsters. I mean dinosaurs, uh, and then capture them, level them up, and use them to battle other players. Sound familiar? Like, nobody... This is crazy. Are you going to be out yeah. in the middle of the night trying to find a T-Rex or something every, like that? Every archaeologist in the world is rolling their eyes right now. Uh, game makers have been rushing to cash in on the AR market after the unprecedented success of Pokemon Go back in 2016. Jurassic World Alive will devour iOS and Android devices soon, likely around the same time that Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom hits theaters in June. Now, remember, we're going to talk about all of these things. If you've got comments or questions or whatever, uh, let's keep it to uh, to the rundown kind of topics for now, okay? Because Johnny and I are going to have a Let's Play and Chat session later on. Mm. Uh, but let's move on to our next story. It looks like Kratos is using all of his might to slay and destroy microtransactions. Can we do it as Kratos? <laughs> microtransactions! I'm just so happy there's no microtransactions in this game. <laughs> the new God of War game will not have any in-game microtransactions or loot boxes. That's according to director Corey Barlog. When asked by a fan on Twitter if players will be able to spend money to unlock content, Barlog replied with an enthusiastic, no freaking way, which should come as a welcome uh, bit of news for gamers everywhere. <laughs> Microtransactions have obviously been getting a lot of heat following recent titles like Star Wars Battlefront 2, so the makers of God of War are smart to skip this issue altogether. God of War hits the PS4 next month, and when it comes out, I plan to have a sick day and be away from everything. Is that cool? Is it every day sick day around here? <laughs> I guess I it is. But let's have a clap, man. Yes. No DLC. I, I love and that, no, Corey no Barlog. Yeah, free stuff. I, I love it. I love that uh, that level of honesty and just you know the excitement to put that information out there is uh, awesome. You and know, appreciate it. it's crazy, but we're applauding a company releasing a game the way they originally used to re release games. Here's the entire game. Enjoy. And you know, we're going to talk a little bit about this because Johnny's here to help me and us celebrate the fact that Nintendo has crossed that one year threshold yes. with the Nintendo Switch. 
Um, but we are going to talk about this idea of games that finish and wrap up and uh, are one thing when you put your money down. Remember you used to put in a cartridge in the 80s and yes. you played the game? That was it? There was no add-on cartridges or another chip you had to put in? I mean, there's, there's a nothing lot of else. amazing things that are coming out of games of ser- as, uh, as service and also the idea that you can embellish your experience by paying to add things. Yeah. But there's also this underlying kind of, uh, I don't know, Try sadness, mi- yeah. I think, for a lot of players that have been playing for a long time going, well, can't I just get the whole thing for one price, you know? And I think as so many players now are so frustrated with companies, there's so much anger yeah. to do with companies now because they don't feel like they're their friends anymore. Yes. But Square Enix, you know, is my friend. They release a game, you know, and that used to be in the past, but now yeah. there's always a little transaction yeah. here and there, and I'm like, and we've kind of, we know not to trust the big companies. It's become that sort of scenario It now. sucks. Right? It sucks. Because in at the core are just game developers that are trying to build art and trying to build this incredible escape, uh, you know, an awesome entertainment. Do the arts of it and all that, the yeah. wonderful stuff there. But they're kind of, it's a, it's a sophisticated market. There's a real intelligence now around how much gamers are willing to spend. Yeah. And as long as there's a portion of that buying public that will just keep spending and spending, they're going to keep making product for there. And I say thank God for all the indie developers. I've been playing Owlboy and Celeste, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the Cat indies. CatQuest. CatQuest. He loves I reviewed, Cat I reviewed Cat Quest. Can't get enough of the I, game. I just think it's cool that there's these, uh, these, these awesome sort of like you pay once, you get the whole thing experience is out there. It's not necessarily coming from too many of the uh, the big publishers. True. But the indie guys, that's their bread and it's butter It's kind of like the EA, you know, the heads of the company are saying, we need this kind of money. Yeah. And DICE is just, they're trying to create an awesome game. So I think, uh, like say, say like DICE gets blamed yeah. for something that's not, honestly not their fault at yes. times. Yes, you know. But uh, bravo to Kratos and God of War. Good I cannot news. freaking really good, wait for really that Really good game. news. Uh, let's see, what else? Any, anybody got any questions or comments or anything, Blake? Have you seen anything? Uh, I want Jurassic World Alive where you try to hide from dinosaurs. Mm. It would be much more suspense. That is an excellent comment from Sean L. He doesn't so he'd be want... out in the world and he'd be trying to hide from them? Yeah, he doesn't want Pokemon Jurassic it, it World. It doesn't make any sense, does it? No. I mean, you. I, I guess you have to commoditize and commercialize these dinosaurs in, in some clever and cute ways, but... It's it really diminishes the brand when you start sort of beach toweling it out like that. You diminishes know? the brand of <laughs> the, Jurassic World. Jurassic World's been going for so many years. The Jurassic series has been going. It's like being okay. milked and, to death. And let's list all of the excellent Jurassic Park video games that have come out. Dino Crisis. The, the, see, I'm joking. Yes, it, it isn't obviously. Right? But Capcom got it right with Dino Crisis. Actually, I would say the Lego, which flies in the face of my comment here, but Lego Jurassic World was actually really was fun. Good? But yes, because you could play as the dinosaur but it mm. sort of po- poked uh, fun at all of this stuff. But that is a brand where you really could be running in terror from dinosaurs yes. and, and really freaked out, and there just haven't been good Jurassic Park games. This is, this is a very Park. casual thing in mobile, right? Yes, so nobody's really going to go nuts about this. True, it's a it'll be forgotten about. It'll be forgotten about in a week. Uh, I didn't like the first Jurassic World, anyways. Neither did I. You know, I did you it, not like the movie? I did not like the movie. You I saw thought, it with Marissa, didn't you? Back yeah, then? and we thought it was so pan. I, I, I was so did I. I was pissed off. Actually, she had, I think had more fun with it because Chris Pratt's in it. Yeah, right. So right. She, it's, she it's was, fine. She was she was halfway there. Just like I, that. well, sure. Okay. I I wasn't moved by the movie. I'm just like, no. oh my god, we're doing this again. Yeah, and we'll be doing it again. Jurassic World too. I yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we're gonna see that together. We'll see. This is the guy that got fired from Star Wars or left Star Wars. Call him Trevor O. It's probably the best story ever. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Okay, let's talk about uh, Fortnite here for a second. I uh, just want to make sure I'm not missing... You're uh, missing everything. Uh, missing question. The question uh, from Feral81, why is Fortnite's 20-player team teams a limited thing? Uh, that's a great question. I would say that they're probably... like this is, this is Testing it? Yeah, this is live game yeah, development, yeah. you know, personified or exemplified. This is a company that is just sort of getting data like you wouldn't believe. And if people love it and they're raving about it, then they'll make it a permanent thing. You yeah, know? yeah. Maybe they'll juice this to 200 people on the island or whatever. Epic is blown away. I can tell you this, mm. that uh, Epic is absolutely floored by the success of this game. I interviewed people at E3 last year before they were releasing uh, Fortnite in general, and it felt like they were just like, they'd been just like, not sleeping, but just working on this forever, and they were exhausted, and they were just like, let's get let's this just out. Get, out. Like, get it out of right. our lives. Right. You know, and I don't know if they were just hungover because it was E3 or whatever, but I got that sense like they were done 
talking about it. Like, Here, just take it. Make just it, take it. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Battle Royale comes out, or the uh, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and then Battle Royale becomes a thing, and then <laughs> they just capitalize on this. Everybody is playing Fortnite. And, yeah. And uh, I have a guy on Facebook. I'm not going to name him, but he's been in the, in the games industry for 20 years, and he's so staunchly against microtransactions and pay to win. That's and great. He hates that stuff. He worked yeah. at Sega and lots of developers over the years, and he's always on the case of all of these games that tr keep trying to pull money out of people. And he, I, Which I, is nearly every game now. I know, and it gets a bit exhausting because he's got great commentary, and I, I, I share a lot of his his opinions around all this stuff, but it is like, oh, man, you got to just... This is the same story from you again and again. I know, again. I know. But he didn't but, but say that about it, yeah. Fortnite. Uh, the, the what do they call the? Is it battle royale? Fortnite battle? Yeah. He said the battle royale mode of Fortnite is actually pretty fair. You yeah. you see what the dollar amounts are for what you want to get, and there isn't any kind of uh, hidden stuff. Uh, it's not really a. Loot what do you have to buy thing. then? What do you have to buy? Uh, I think it's like, uh, yeah, it's it's all cosmetic Cosmetics, stuff uh, to yeah, make yeah. your character and stuff, but. I tell you, you and I should play that game together. You want to yeah. review that? Oh, uh, we could try it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we should check it out when's together. The, when's the embargo break on that? It's been out forever. Oh. Everybody's playing. Then it. who cares? <laughs> let's let's play some new games. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Aren't you curious? I'd like to just play with you just for fun, just to see how it is. I'd let you try okay, it out. All right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you know what? Maybe we'll play and then we'll have you back on EP yeah. live and we'll talk about it. Uh, Vic, any plans uh, on eventually doing some kind of meet and greet in Toronto or other cities or fans of EP Leafs fan? I would love to do that. Um, I have been talking with people. Something almost came together, but it didn't come together. Fan. Expo would be a good example of yes. something like that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I'm sure I'll be out in Toronto. Maybe I'll bring this guy and we'll both go out to Toronto for something cool. Uh, okay, it's great to see everybody, by the way. Paul and, and the Wren and... Uh, um, and Sean L. and Dude with the Gun and uh, Dan, Dan Scully. Is it Scully or Sully? <laughs> I think Scully, yes. Great. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Buchu says Jim Sterling with a question mark. Okay. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a big reviewer guy. Yes, I know. Jim. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't know that. Yeah, guy. Jim he, Sterling. Yes, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's what that's meaning, I guess. Oh, and now we've got Harley H saying, "I just want Di uh, Dice to make a battle royale game, a battlefield royale game." See what I did there? He's in the frostbite Ooh, nice. engine. Yeah, I think you can count on that. Mm -hmm. Actually, this year, and same with Call of Duty, battle royale is going to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're going to have it all over the place, probably even on the Switch. Uh, I think that's good. Those are the big ones. Is that it? Yeah, well, there's the... Uh, there's not a lot of huge gaming news coming out right now. Yeah, everybody's in sort of clampdown mode just before GDC. I think things start to pick up a little bit in a, in a few What's weeks. What's looking here. like for GDC for you? I'm still on the fence about whether we're going to do it or not. <sighs> yeah. it's. Uh, think of all the content. We there. could get a lot of content and I could meet a Back lot of folks. Back and forth. I know, but I, I'm also digging being in the studio and having yeah, people in yeah. and doing all of this chatting. So I... I'm, I'm contemplating it. I haven't made my final decision if I'm going to go or not. Uh, but I am going away uh, for a little quick vacation because uh, my kid's in uh, spring break. So, right, yes. Um, so that's also playing in that decision mm. as well. Uh, the, the Black Ops 3 news is a pretty big deal, though. The fact that that uh, Call of Duty is, uh, or Activision is still supporting that is pretty cool. That's pretty good for anybody still playing the game, which I'm sure, you know, some people, though, who start playing these shooting games, they're addicted and they only play that shooting game yes. for years. Yes, And they're, and they're upset when the game gets kind of like discontinued or the next big and game comes out. you're not like that? And I'm no, not like well, that. Well, I, I used to be like that back when I was 14 years old, and mm -hmm. I get one game for the entire six months. Yeah. You know, at, at a time or even a year, I'd still be playing that game. Well, but, this is the thing that I've really come to realize. Yeah. Is like, like, you started this because you have a, you're a happy console gamer, and I started yeah. EP because we have this insatiable appetite oh, yeah. for new <laughs> things and new discoveries. New movies, and, new video games. You can't get enough. And even within games, like we want new levels and new characters yeah. and new modes within a specific thing. And if, like, I love Overwatch and I love Goldeneye and I love, uh, you know, Call of Duty and I love the. Halo. I love them. They're amazing. But, you know, after you do 500 matches. Yeah. Like, I well, just don't see enough new stuff for me personally. You know, what it is about for, for some younger people and people our age who really yeah. get addicted to these games is, you know, memorizing every map and absolutely annihilating and camping your opponents <laughs> and sniping them from a distance. They spawn, they're dead. They know the you, minutia. Yeah, yeah, it feels so good and it's so fulfilling to yes. destroy people that way. And I get that. It's like going home. But I, I get... I, I want new. That's my thing, right? Yeah. And that's why I'm not 
super hyped about this games of service and mm. things going on forever and ever. I like games with an ending. Yeah. I like the idea of completing something and putting it away and then maybe going back to revisit it. Yeah, kind of a, a classic example of, of how we play games is when we played Mario Odyssey. Yeah. You, at, you were at your place, I was at my place, 15 hours each, we annihilated the game yeah. that weekend just so we could review it. Uh -huh. You know, and then at the end I was like, I loved it, but I was like, I wouldn't, I didn't love it the way a regular p person would like it. Yeah. They could take their time. I felt I had to really go, 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 go yeah, on. Yeah, sometimes that happens for and sure. I yeah, that's the first, and I, it was only a little bit afterwards where I could really take in Mario Odyssey and yeah. enjoy it I you know, a little I, bit more. And I know that, like, the reviewing element plays into that, but... I think that even if I was just a regular consumer, because I used to have every machine. Me too. And Always. I used to, like every month, and this is the genesis of Electric Playground, is like I had spent $300 a month on video You games. had a really good paper route, didn't you? I had a great paper <laughs> route. So that back in, in those early days, it was really rudimentary systems. But uh, by the time I was a working guy, working at a restaurant and, oh, and that, acting that, and yeah. stuff, I had some money. And so every month I was blowing a lot of money on, on cartridges. And uh, yeah, it was all cartridges at the time. I had it the was. Lynx and the Sega and CD, the, and the, Sega CD yeah. and the uh, Super Nintendo. And You I, never had a Turbo Graphics. What was your issue? I, I eventually went and bought one of the uh, portable ones, but I never had the... Oh, the Turbo Express. I, I went through a period where I was in, I was in uh, university and acting school and stuff. And That's no excuse. I just it moved away. And then I went to a dedicated acting school and I got right into games and I used to use games as my, my impetus for channeling emotion for my characters. Oh my god. And I what? brought that up in class. What do you mean how? How would that even work? Well I would get super frustrated or super elated and I would remember that and, re and recall oh. that and, it, and then I would talk about that in class and everybody thought I was insane because <laughs> like nobody was god. using video you know, you games. Got, you <laughs> smashing the controller yes. last night. You just reenacted that that you were mad at something <laughs> in an acting class against another student during a play. Oh yes. That's wild. Well, that's that's so fast. I'm not an actor, and I don't think in those terms, so that's interesting. Oh, yeah, you had to find... I used to follow people. I'd, fly, I'd walk behind them and get their the way they would move, what? and I would take that character into class. Oh, my God. And you were that creep walking down the street. That was... No, I'm, I'm, just I'm an observer, man. Wow. And, and the, all that skill, all that stuff, the, the stuff that I learned in the restaurant and all the acting stuff, that helped me walk into What, what was the, stuff, that you what was the stuff you learned in the restaurant? How did that help you in acting? Uh, well, it helped me with running my own business mm. and sort of keeping my, my stuff together to kind of uh, present to anybody and right. talk with anyone and present an idea to anybody and, right. and be clear and concise about it. Because you're dealing with customers and you every have to be day. clear and, and, and concise. And you're running your own business and the yeah. way that they dealt with you directly influenced how much you walked out. And it was a pretty night. pretty, pretty high class restaurant you I, were in. I worked in a jazz restaurant called the Elm Street Cafe, which was an right. amazing place in Vancouver. I had... Uh, Harry Connick Jr.'s band come in one night. Wow. Diana Krall used to play there all the time. Uh, Patrick uh, uh, McLovin or uh, McDreamy. <laughs> Mc, Mc, <laughs> no, McDreamy. McDreamy, <laughs> McDreamy. From, from that show, the Grey's yeah. Anatomy show. I served yeah. him one night. And, and you served Rutger Hauer one Rutger night. Hauer, I, Rutger Hauer. Yeah, I yeah. met lots of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots, of, lots of famous people. That's amazing. Yeah, it was. And so uh, you talked to a lot of people and you had to use the. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Some I those just learned all that stuff. Amazing. Anyways, we went off on a big tangent. Let's, Let's do it. <laughs> I want to hear that. <laughs> Let's take a look back at this day and everything cool.